Hey, everybody, what a fantastic weekend. The points were flowing, flowing like wine, as they say. The stinkers, the studs on today's show, and we break down some of the news, and we break down some of the tilting that may or may not have happened over the weekend. Don't miss a moment. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Welcome into the show Monday, December 2nd episode of the podcast Andy Mike and Jason the fantasy footballers through another tumultuous weekend of fantasy football the Monday night game this evening congratulations to those of you who made your fantasy playoffs Mm -hmm. yes congratulations to those of you that will end up on the right side of the Hopkins Watkins lateral debate Uh, it's so funny because I actually had text messages from friends this morning wanting to know well that that you know that was a lateral that's going to oh, get no. that's going to get corrected right Oh no my so, friends that's know, a forward pass I go to the tape and I'm like eh, I'm really I'm sorry to tell you this but he let go of that ball at the 6 and he got it at the 5 and a quarter and uh no that's a pass I also the first time I saw the play I thought that Hopkins had fumbled. It, <laughs> yeah, he, he threw like, it late. He's like getting hit. It looked like it went, whoa, whoa, whoa. and then Watson just happened to be there, but it was a great you see, play. You see that, Trubisky? That's how you run that play. <laughs> they asked him after the game, you know, they, they said, hey, you, you, know, you did that in practice. How did it feel in the game compared to practice? And he was just like, well... I didn't get flipped over in <laughs> practice, so it was a little different. I, I also saw him say that when he looked at the, you know, he saw it pre-snap. He's like, he he knew he had to change it, <laughs> and he's like, no, I'm just, we're just gonna go. <laughs> and, then he, and then they scored a touchdown. Yeah, what a performance by Houston last night. Yes, opening very impressive. up that AFC playoff picture a little bit. Super close game, twenty-two to twenty-eight. In <laughs> very, the end, huh? very Ooh. close. Yes, the smell. Oh, Ooh, man. the smell. James White going ham. That last James White reception was where nobody played defense. Was hilarious. <laughs> yes. The Texans so, are like, come on, dude. The game is over. What are you doing, James? James, what are you doing? Stop. For fantasy! <laughs> <laughs> He's just running, screaming that down the field. We've got the weekly oh. rewind today. Stud muffins, stinkers of the week. Our own reactions, mm. probably some insight on our own gut punches that took place over the weekend in different leagues. Uh, happy to say that we are playoff bound in NFL League One. Yes, in, in the and league, the Sleeper Bowl. Yes, the League for One. St. Jude. We we secured the spot of the playoffs. We we will be taking on Adam Rank. That's and, round one. Yeah, and th- those playoffs actually start in Week 15. In the Sleeper Bowl, we did secure the bye week and a. They asked for it, and they deserve it. A proper shout-out to Nelk Films, the, the boys over there. They are the number one seed in the Sleeper Bowl. They mm. have a dominant team, and they've been kicking butt. We'll see you in so, the championship. Yeah, hopefully we see them in the championship. So does that mean we're off next week before we face rank? We just have that, nothing? That is in correct. In League One, correct. In League yeah, One? The playoffs haven't started, right. but we've already locked in. So basically we have a bye week in both of those. Yeah. So we're taking the, the show off next oh, week. Okay, <laughs> taking the week off. That'll be this week. To deal with my own uh, missing the Dynasty League by six points on the season. Yeah, we're missing yeah. the League of Record because of that Phillip Rivers interception two weeks ago, you bum. We're doing fine. Like, we're doing so fine. <laughs> that- Fantasy is so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're doing fine because we are sophisticated. Oh, yeah. And oh. we would never let emotions up. overwhelm us. And so let's get into mm, our gosh. Monday pun day. Let's kick it. We've got Geist, Geist, baby. Oh, yeah. Or maybe the Geist is right. Cole Beastly. He really was. Oh, I follow that with Tyler Higbeast. Tyler Hig played Arizona. (laughs) Higwee. (laughs) McCole Fartman. Oh. That's not fair. Come on. 
Le'Veon smells. I, I smell Williams. <laughs> <laughs> smell a fart ski. Derek <laughs> Carbage. People know how to get on the show. When, when I saw that, I thought it was Derek Cabbage, which no. is just as good. Yeah, just as many fantasy points. Jonathan Williams. Oh, man. And then the weekly shot at Mike Mevins. Oh, come Me- on. Me- You're where you are. Isn't he like of the Mike number Evans. one? Yeah. I I have had Mike Evans, and he has, over the course of the season, uh, had a lot of fantasy points put up. But the way in which they have come have not produced enough consistency. So I'm I'm with the Mike Evans, you know, Mike Mevins out there. We'll get into the truth after the season. Look at the consistency of those guys. You're right. He's had some, obviously, some. He had a goose Couple, early in the season, and it's been weird. Total points does not, you know, you needed more than right. what you got yesterday. So that's why people are acting out yeah. <laughs> against him. You can find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. I encourage everyone to check out jointhefoot.com, our fantasy football community. We just added a Discord server. We've got forums. We've got leagues. we got proprietary uh, reports. And what's great is as the off season is approaching, you get an extra episode of this show because we, we cut down – total episodes per week during the beginning of the off season and you get an extra episode so you can stay connected where you ask the questions yes and, and, and well we ask the questions actually because we are reading them but we they both. Are, you submit the questions <laughs> thank you jason then we read them and maybe we answer them oh that's true all right let's get into the rewind weekly rewind All right, Baker Mayfield underwent x-rays on the throwing hand for a contusion during halftime. Said he's supposed to be fine. Yeah, he missed a couple plays, but uh, came back in. He's he's fine. Nick Foles was benched. I'm sorry. How do you... I, it, I, it's so hard because if you don't bench him, you're doing the wrong thing. But if you do bench him, you just benched $45 million. It's the right decision for your football team. Like Nick Foles... He has had not been playing great football heading into this week. The matchup seemed to me. I'm sorry. I thought the matchup was going to be enough for Nick Foles to overcome. To everyone. I mean, Tampa is terrible. Now, with there were a couple of these guys, right? And and wind and weather played a factor in a lot of these games. But certainly, uh, e- either either Foles doesn't know how to play in the wind or he just was straight up But But, you know... Just to speak to the narrative that Tampa Bay is terrible, you're now two consecutive weeks of looking at what they give up to fantasy quarterbacks and wide receivers and two consecutive weeks of disappointment. Matt Matt Ryan was terrible against them. Wasn't that a few weeks ago? No. No, that was was, was last week. That was last week. And then Nick Foles, both of those players look like smash plays, and both of them stunk. So we need to bear that in mind in the – Streaming uh, Jacoby Brissett next week discussion. Just need to keep it in mind. Greg Olson, concussion. It was an ugly one. Daryl Williams, left with a hamstring injury. Yeah, Darwin Thompson got into that game. Darwin, well, number one. So Daryl Williams went down. It was a non-contact where he, if you remember the Devin Singletary play from the beginning of the season where Daryl Williams was just taking a, he was running the ball out to the left, went down. You have to imagine that he's going to miss some time Darwin Thompson does become interesting because of Damian Williams' injury and Shady McCoy's uh, fumbling, and he's been getting banged up this week or this year. And Darwin, but Darwin Thompson got in because the game was a blowout, and the team finally got to see what Darwin could do. Is that enough to earn Darwin playing time? That remains to be seen. Uh, I think the injuries are. I mean, if if Damian isn't back and Daryl's out, then yeah, Darwin's going to be important. He's an explosive player, so he has the possibility of much like a Miles Sanders win. Jordan Howard was the lead dog. Could give you that one big play in a game, even if he's not having considerable work. But, you know, at this time of year, you might be in a situation where you need to look at him. We'll talk waivers tomorrow. Kalen Balaj, leg injury. Patrick Laird stepped up. He <laughs> Sort of. I mean, he scored. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's stepping up in Miami. <laughs> they won that game, too. So, shout out to... To, to Miami, Miami. I to mean, 
Fitzpatrick? I, well, I, I couldn't help but just start to roll over in my head what this game meant to Philadelphia and for them to lose that game. Their season has gone sideways quickly. I, I couldn't see the future. It was a lie. <laughs> oh, it was all a lie. Hold on. Eagles. Hold on just a minute. We trusted you. I know. It was a big show and dance. <laughs> Wow! I, was, I believed you. I was pretending. <laughs> I thought you I genuinely could... knew the future because no. you said that you knew it. Only if they win. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it wasn't. A, I would say a not great year for the Eagles. Uh, Accurate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Adam Thielen out. Surprisingly, we found that out yesterday. We found that out. Borland. Uh, Giamatti, did we hear that like after the kickoffs? Yes. Yeah, that yep. was in the middle of the morning. So if games. you had a player you were going to play over Thielen, they would have been locked on your bench by the yeah. time you found out. And I, I don't have this. I, I don't have Thielen anywhere, so I didn't have the decision to be made. But I for sure would have waited because I, have, yes, I would have as well. Everything said he was going to play. He was practicing uh, on the week. It just looked like he was ready to go. And uh, no, no. Yeah, people might have made decisions on Kyle Rudolph on the basis that Thielen was back well, and if, not, not playing Kyle Rudolph. If you did what you should have done at the very least, which is make sure he's in your flex, uh, you, I think Kyle Rudolph can actually be a pivot. Yeah, as, that, that's actually you smart. Know, if, if you're you know looking at your roster and there's nobody else to pick up and you can uh, pivot to Kyle Rudolph, then uh, you know I think he's got as good odds at a touchdown as anybody tonight. Yeah, that's a that's a fair point. I guess you could do the same with uh, Hollister, potentially. Sure. You could pick him up. Weekly Rewind News Notes brought to you by the Sleeper app. Let's talk studs. This week's Fantasy Stud Muffins. It was a stud week for Aaron Rodgers. He thought he was in Lambo. He's like, look at this snow. I'm good. The plan, <laughs> the plan is working out, fellas. Start, well, start, sit. Yep. Start, 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 start cut. cut. Yeah. So Washington next week, smash play for Rodgers. Then Chicago, then Minnesota. Chicago and Lambo, man. That's, People that's are going to want to play about. him. That's why we're talking about yes. now, to avoid you yeah. playing him in that all-important week. But that's going to be tough because if he smashes again this coming week, which he should, and he's gonna. how do you bench him at home in the – Playoffs. That's why you have to cut him, but you got Yeah, you got to <laughs> – exactly. You can't just bench him. You have to cut him. People are going to do it. I really hope we're right on that. I do too. It's part of the plan. Oh, my gosh. How's that... the future look over there, future man, for Air Rogers? I don't know, Roger. Say that it looks good. <laughs> Rogers really likes to show people that he's not dead. 21 for 33, four touchdowns. Before week 13, he had thrown a combined two touchdown passes in the past three games. That's the thing you need to remember. Yes. All right, Ryan Fitzpatrick went crazy. Devontae Parker had the best game of his career. <laughs> oh, he's a beast. I'm, I'm, I'm so happy what is happening with Ryan Fitzpatrick and Devontae Parker. Like These, these are the fantasy things that bring me joy is when this, just the stinkiest of – of I, fantasy trash, or they're actually gold. I love that you know early in the season, wh whenever it was, you know, several weeks ago, five or six weeks ago, when I said I love Devonte yeah. Parker, I believe we cut that sound clip out to play at my funeral. Yes, and we'll never hear it when it's right. <laughs> it's like we don't, we don't <laughs> come back to it. Not if you die soon. That's true. Then we'll then you fingers you'll be a, crossed. You'll be a genius. <laughs> 303. That's what Mitch Trubisky, Tom Brady, and Carson Wentz put up this week. Oh, Brady. Tom Brady. You garbage can. Yeah, that was – that's not – This is not, not fair. It's not fair. Brady looked – I mean, I was thinking oh, – Thank you. Uh, Brady looked horrific for most of the game. He looked I, – I was walking to my car this morning and thinking, is this the time – where Philip Rivers and Brady like are the are the old men starting to show that they're getting washed and I you you can never because of the Patriots you you know they they've still got Super Bowl runs in them for the next six or seven years but it just felt <laughs> like it it felt like watching them they were a step slow they couldn't move around the pocket like they always have they missed throws that you just don't you don't see. Brady and Rivers just missing throws for the last five years. 
And that's what you're seeing. And then, of course, he ends up with a good fantasy game. Well, and Deshaun Watson was the story of the evening. 18 for 25, 234 and 3. Had a rushing touchdown. Had a rece- had the receiving touchdown. Uh, what What's kind of crazy to me, and this is why I've been a Bill O'Brien supporter since he's been there, is that they th- two or three times a year they show up in big, important games with a game plan to win. And this was a game where Tom Brady and the offense couldn't get bailed out by the super defense because – Houston had a game plan to win the ball game, and they did. I mean, it was just well executed. They Watson should have those benched. game plans more often. <laughs> they, they should do that more than twice a year. Well, you're you're not wrong, but they are a good team. They're a good team, right. and they uh, they have Denver, Tennessee, Tampa on the schedule to finish out the year. Watson balled out, and uh, here we are. I mean, making New England look mortal. They they no longer have the one seed. You know, right. that, that belongs to Baltimore now. A lot of people out there benched Deshaun Watson because of the matchup. I'm I'm happy that, you know, we, we were saying he's not a must-bench guy. You I saw didn't, it with I Dak. I didn't want to play him. You saw it with Dak. It was Dak the, had a good game against, you know, the It Patriots. was the fact he was at home. Yeah, big time. I was super afraid of him on the road, less afraid at home. But at the same time, you you might have pivoted. Now, if you pivoted to Jared Goff. You're happy. You're fine. I mean, he, that's, you had that's a great beautiful. Game. He, oh! Introduced. Can yeah. I play the Cardinals oh, next week? Everybody. Okay. But if you pivoted to Darnold. No, uh, that wasn't good. No, that wasn't good. Uh, or Kyler. Yeah. Mm. But Jared Goff, 424. He was. Uh, he had more yards in the first half than I think he had in the previous two games combined. Arizona. Is that true? Arizona. Pl- yeah. <laughs> Arizona plays. Poorly. Like, you know how sometimes you got like, they're. They're man, they're manned up and they're on the ball and they're jamming them. Or then they're like, oh, there's off coverage and they play off five or ten yards. Right, they play off fifteen twenty. Well, you I gotta mean, give them that cushion. The cushion is you don't want to get beat deep. That's right. I mean, we watched this thing out here. This, they're coming off a bye week. Arizona looked as bad as a team could look this week. They were rusty. <laughs> you know. Yeah, you're I you're think, right. I think that they a, were too rested. They were too rested. They were they were trying to get back into game shape <laughs> after that bye week. I mean, they were so bad. I couldn't even you know, we're in Arizona. We are Cardinals fans and watching this game just from that perspective was like, Man, this team sucks. It was gross. Yeah, it was ugly. They have no defense whatsoever. So whoever they're playing, I believe Pittsburgh next week. Decisions to be made in Pittsburgh. The, there was a play. Vance McDonald. Oh, no. oh my There was goodness. a play where they – Nick Vanette, why yeah, not? If, sure, roll him out. Where uh, Higby rolls out, and he was well covered, and they, and they missed the play. And I said at the studio, I was like, oh, my goodness, we the Cardinals just guarded a tight end. The next play was a touchdown to Tyler Higby. Yeah. Like they had one good coverage all game. Yeah, it was a one-time thing. Running back, studs. It's the group we all expected. Darius Geis, Raheem Mostert, and James White leading the way. Mostert, 19 for 146 and 1. Against Baltimore. Against Baltimore, 42 snaps. Tevin Coleman had 10 snaps. What do fantasy owners do with Tevin Coleman, Mike? Uh, Dude, I don't know. I mean, I I didn't – I was fading – Tevin Coleman in this matchup, plus you added in the fact that there they had some some weather issues there where it was going to be wet conditions. I didn't really like Coleman. This wasn't though that I don't like Coleman, so I'm going to pivot to the backup running back. But Coleman, we have kind of highlighted over the last couple of weeks that Coleman he looks like fantasy fool's gold. He came out after the injury, had that one massive game where he got like three touchdowns. On very limited touches, it seemed like he was going to be the guy. Then Matt Burita goes out, but Coleman is just—he is not—he's not a safe running back too. He has upside every week, but he's—he's he's not safe. Yeah, we we brought it up a couple weeks ago. The fact that if you take out that monstrous game, his weekly average was the the running back twenty seven. It's only gone down since we brought that up. I mean, he's not even an RB two. He's, you know, and, and when you're playing RB3s, you're not winning in, in your normal weekly matchups. The question, and we'll dive into it more tomorrow, about the waivers, who do you pick up? Is Brita coming back? Is Mostert a must-grab? 
Is Coleman injured? Was there something more to the benching? Yeah, it's going to get complicated. They have New Orleans in New Orleans next oh, week. No, thank you. And Matt Burrito, I think, will be back. He was very close to getting back this past week. It will muddy the waters. And if you're leaning on Tevin Coleman, you're in trouble next week. Darius Geis had 10 carries. 10. That's not a lot. That You, you want... Not according to Carolina. They said that's just just enough. <laughs> that's a plenty. 129 yards, two touchdowns. Do you really have two? Yeah. yeah. I, I, in my matchup, wow. here's a little peel back the curtain. In my matchup, my opponent, who has pretty much a super team, what a loser Julio Jones was out. He had to pivot from Julio to his bench. And who did he throw in but Darius Geis? <laughs> that <laughs> jerk. <laughs> Adrian Peterson in his own right was 13 for 99 with a touchdown as well, which means combined they put up, what, 228 yards and three touchdowns on the ground against Carolina? Yeah, you can run on the Panthers. Aaron, no, who who plays Panthers next week? Uh, I was thinking it was Green Bay. Yeah, it, whoever it is, is. You've been Atlanta. starting running backs, yeah. Oh, no. Devonta, <laughs> you ready? Oh, no, I don't know. If, I'm not ready for this. Don't you wanna? So James White. Wanna Devonta. <laughs> Sorry. James White had had a horrible previous week, but they were playing from behind the whole game, and the garbage time thing came to fruition. Has Kansas City next week? You could be in a similar boat next week. So, James White, you can play moving forward. Miles Sanders, 17 for 83. Finally. And also had five catches for 22 yards and a touchdown. I don't know when we'll see Jordan Howard again, to be honest with you. So, Miles Sanders, the majority of all the work, you know, I saw J.J. talking about we've had this narrative of committee backs in Philadelphia, and they just want to do a committee. Well, they don't want to unless they can with the talent that they have available. If it's Howard and Miles Sanders, they do. If it's Miles Sanders and Jay Ajayi, they don't. Miles Sanders takes uh, the vast majority of all the work. He had a nice game. They have New York and Washington coming up. So Miles Sanders may be one of the players – that gets you to the championship game? Yes. It, this this next week against the Giants, if Jordan Howard is out again, then Miles Sanders is in a great position yet again. Uh, and Todd Gurley, Jason, start of the week. Big week, 19 for 95 and 1. Mm -hmm. um, and Ronald Jones. Don't, or, yeah, or, don't uh, forget Ronald <laughs> Jones. What? Pete Barber. 17 for 44, Mike. The process was sound. And two. Two touchdowns. Come on. When yeah. did Pete Barber become the starter again? What happened? Yesterday, Mike. It was yesterday. <laughs> Dang, why can't you inform me, do you, Bruce? Do you honestly we friends. think he has like a magic eight ball, Bruce Arians, that has... <laughs> of who to play? Of, of which guy to roll out because you just can't ever know. It's one of those situations where if you just... If you're in a league where you get the backfield, if you, you just say, uh, I get the Tampa Bay running backs. You know, there are leagues like that out there where you get the, the position right. of a team then you are so stinking happy with Tampa Bay's running game this year. They've been very good. But in normal fantasy leagues, it's it, impossible. It's imp it's literally been probably the most destructive running back situation in the league because every single time through the year where it seems like there was a glimmer of trust, the rope was pulled out from underneath you. He, he shook the ball. The, the rope. Yeah, the rope. <laughs> On a rope. You stand on the, the rope. Old cliche. You don't want the rope pulled out from underneath you. I said it. I knew it was wrong. Step one: Don't stand on a rope. Yeah, because yeah. someone could pull it. Because <laughs> someone could just yank it out from under you. The rug. The rug is what you should be standing on. The when the rug was when the pulled. tight rope gets pulled out from underneath you. Oh yeah, you. that's scary. Top uh, to your teach death. me for standing on a rope. No, every league that I was in, I saw Ronald Jones in lineups, and those teams and normally had Peyton Barber on their rosters on the bench, <sighs> and uh, it cost you. So, hey, we want to pause. We want to get into uh, – we want to thank our sponsors today before we talk about wide receiver studs, which means talking about Harry's. It's holiday season. Say goodbye to dull, cliche gifts. I don't need no more socks. I don't need a wallet. I don't need a tie. What I need is a special gift, and you can get that at Harry's. Uh, listeners of our show get $5 off any Harry's shave set by heading to harrys.com slash footballer. And they start at just 20 bucks. so if you're in one of those secret Santa situations, that's within limits, okay, of your secret Santa. I've used Harry's for years. High-quality blades, great shave every single time. 
And as a special special offer for fans of the show, we've partnered with Harry's to give you $5 off any shave set, including their limited edition holiday sets. When you go to harrys.com slash footballer, plus you'll get free shipping. Each Harry's shave set comes with a weighted handle with the option to engrave five blade razor cartridges, foaming shave gel, and a rich lather travel cover to protect your blades and is packaged in a handsome holiday gift box. Free shipping ends on December 16th, so act right now. Go to harrys.com slash footballer. That's harrys.com slash footballer. And we want to thank SeatGeek, Seat long-time Geek. sponsor and a, a company we've used so many times I can't even count. If you're going to a live event, if the Just holidays are coming up and you want to... the Cardinals. Right. We don't recommend the Cardinals. Outside of that, all live events are cool. Um, you know, I, I, we're planning a New York trip. We just got tickets for Frozen. We are, Jay? My family. Oh, you guys. Oh, Sorry. Thanks. I was excited. I mean, you're like close, but you're not, you're mm. not family. Well. But we will send <laughs> pics of how awesome our shows are uh, that we are going to because we got them on SeatGeek. They are the easiest place. You could stop searching for a million different places because SeatGeek pools all the tickets to one convenient spot, their their maps of the venues are fantastic. Show you this green to red scale, one to ten, on whether it's a good price or not. Look, there's a reason they have over fifty thousand five star reviews. SeatGeek is awesome. They will even give you ten dollars off your first SeatGeek purchase. All you need to do is use our promo code. Download the SeatGeek app today and use promo code Ballers for ten dollars off your first purchase. That's promo code Ballers. For ten dollars off your first purchase with SeatGeek. All right, wide receiver studs. Devontae Parker takes the cake. He's going to win people fantasy leagues against Philadelphia. Seven for one fifty nine and two. Ten targets. Has the Jets and Giants in their next two matchups. And heck, if you play in Week Seventeen, oh, just enjoy the Bengals. Since Week Eight, he's the wide receiver eight. Fifteen point four <laughs> fantasy points per game. Man. We've seen Ryan Fitzpatrick do this before, but what we haven't seen. Uh, when the season began was it was Fitz, then it was Rosen, and then there was Preston Williams, and now all of a sudden the great bearded one is just flinging it. He's getting it done, man. He smiles when he's winning. He smiles when he's losing. He doesn't care. But Cortland Sutton balled out as well. Five targets, two touchdowns, including one of the best catches of the season. Oh, my good. The touchdown? It was unbelievable. I mean, he's diving. So, like, making a diving catch is so much harder than we think because we get to see these amazing athletes make diving catches all the time. And, and oftentimes those diving catches are dropped. Now do it with one hand. Now dive with a guy on your back, a tiny window where you only get to see the ball at the last second. Grab it with your far single hand. Pin it to your neck. And then when you when you you should be a color man when you hit the ground, <laughs> don't let that ball roll. It was unbelievable. Cortland Sutton to me was almost an unplayable asset this week. I was wrong. I, I saw him with you know look Drew Locke coming in. Is it going to be good or bad? It's it's not going to be not great, Bob. But he it is, was better than Brandon Allen. He's fantastic. Cortland Sutton is just so good, and we've said this before. We said this when Brandon Allen came, like. Sutton is the real deal. There's still there's still more variability to him than there are other yes. top notch wide receivers. You you said better than Brandon Allen. Well, not true. The first time he played with Brandon Allen, I mean, he scored in that game and was well, I'm great. I'm saying watching Drew Lock play, he was a better quarterback than Brandon Allen, and Drew Lock is willing to take chances down the field. Yeah, so. I mean, so let's turn that to the fantasy realm are you confident with Sutton do you just lock him in moving forward because it's the same question with Kenny Galladay the, the, if he's got a third string quarterback you know David Blau Ooh, I like it we've got a new Blau pow um yeah look Cortland Sutton's schedule coming up it's nice Houston Kansas City and Detroit yeah those are three plus matchups which means you play him he's going to be in everyone's lineup that is out there and you know you're gonna find out is he is he up to the task all right Alshon Jeffrey and Robert Woods, 16 targets for Jeffrey, 19 for Robert Woods, which was uh, incredible. Jeffrey, you always play Jeffrey when he's back. I, I said that on the show last week. You, When you have no wide receivers for Carson Wentz, you saw it the week before with no wide receivers. When Jeffrey comes back, he always ends up with double-digit targets. Did I see 9 for 137 on one? I don't think anybody did, but that was a monstrous game from Jeffrey. They were trying to get back into it at the very end. 16 targets. My goodness. that's You can't trust anybody else on the offense. 
No, not really. Well, Ertz. I mean, you play Ertz every week in – you're just talking I mean, wide, in the wide receiver core. Yeah, yeah, that is that is accurate. When Wentz goes through his progressions, it's like three Jeffries and an Aguilar, and that's how it goes. One, two, three, and then Robert Woods, nineteen targets, thir- thirteen catches, what, one hundred and seventy-two yards. He's nineteen. <laughs> he's he's a good wide receiver. I get uh, it. Just is so bizarre. But you can't you can't believe very much. Every opportunity you've had this season to piggyback a Cardinal game. Has failed. That's not not, not you're you're saying with uh, golf. I'm talking about when people come out. Hawkinson week one. When you come out and you dominate the Arizona Cardinals, sure, you take it with a grain of salt every single time. This will be the best game Robert Woods has this year. Oh well, I mean, when you have 172 yards, I think that's true of almost everybody. But to, to Robert fair, Woods has been good lately. 80 yards, 95, 97, 172 yards. Those are four of his last five games. He yeah. had a turd in there with 35 yards, but he's actually been pretty darn good. And I think the beginning of the year was the was what has really scarred people. Because I mean, he, he he sucked to start the year. Outside of that 164 yeah. yard. Game. No, I, I'm I'm with Jason that his last three games, 95, 97, 172. Yes, he's not going to get you 172 yards. What's funny is 172 yards is actually. Only his best game by eight yards. <laughs> like he had a hundred and sixty four yard what's game amazing earlier. Is no touchdowns. Yeah. He has no receiving touchdowns on the year. That is that's that makes no sense. It's really hard to do when you're talking about, you know, he's got eight hundred and thirty five yards right now. He's on pace for twelve hundred uh yards and no no receiving touchdowns? Yeah. Just wild weird, man. No, I mean, it, we knew that Rams players were going to dominate Arizona, but it's been rough sledding with what Goff had put up. He put up zero passing touchdowns in November. So, yeah, Robert and, Woods wasn't alone in not catching any. And the schedule is uh, not the best going forward. Seattle's fine. I think that's a matchup that you, you can uh, do well against. But Dallas and San Francisco, those, those are difficult. Yeah. Uh, who, who do you have more confidence moving forward with from this group of uh, – Honorable mentions this week. I, you know, I'm going to go straight up just studs. Anthony Miller was nine for 140 on 13 targets. That was one more target than Allen Robinson had. Has Dallas on Thursday. Cole Beasley. I believe you mean Cole Beastly. Yeah, Cole Beastly. Thank you. Six for 110 and one. Or James Washington, who once again ended up on the stat sheet and has Arizona next week. Four for 111 for James Washington. I have to trust one of those three. You have, yeah, you do. You, you've got to make a play. Uh, Anthony Miller's been way more involved over the last two weeks. You know, I didn't mention Trubisky, but he was he was three hundred and three, yeah. and you know they have Dallas on Thursday. Anthony Miller thirteen targets. Cole Beasley, who if you've chased the points with Beasley, you've been rewarded. And then James Washington's been big. Well, I don't know if you guys realize this, but Devlin Hodges. He is the first undrafted rookie quarterback to win his first two starts since Ed Robert. Oh, I in remember 1987. Old Ed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, Hot stats. I think obviously James Washington has the best matchup because he's playing Arizona. They're duck next bros, week. man. But I think I would trust Cole Beasley. He's he's just been more involved more often. Several good weeks. I st- I every week I'm like I don't want to trust Cole Beasley. But then he's been good, uh, you know, more often than he's been bad. So I think I would put my trust there. With Anthony Miller, he has had such a great stretch of games, and he's good. But, you know, I brought this up two weeks ago and again this last week. Mitchell Trubisky's splits when he plays a top 10 defense passing defense versus a bottom 10 passing defense are astronaut. It's 10 points to 26 points. He can beat up on bad passing defenses and absolutely is horrific against good passing defenses. So I'm not going to trust Trubisky against Dallas this coming week. Yeah, it's helped that Taylor Gabriel's been out. At the tight end position, Tyler Higby did what <laughs> anyone would do against of the Cardinals. Course. And when I say anyone, I mean Red Ellison. I mean Ross Dwelling. Mm. I mean, if you play tight end or if you hold up a little uh, name card and it says tight end on it, they will let you pass. It's yeah. it's frivolous. Tyler Higby, seven for one oh seven and one. So Tyler Higby, th- these this is his career yardage. Like it's uh, uh, among his. He did years, that in the first half. Career high in yardage, first so, half. Well, it, his rookie year, he put up eighty five yards 
after on that, the on the on the season on the season two hundred and ninety five okay. yards total the next year. It's pretty good. Two hundred ninety two yards total the next year. He put up one hundred and seven yards and a touchdown. <laughs> it's, Running it's wild and free. Unbelievable. Yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. So is he a one week play? Yeah, yeah, he's a one week play. Yes. Uh, Mike Gesicki, five for seventy nine and one. This was exciting to see a second consecutive week with a touchdown. Gasicki's in that streaming uh, shot category with the way Fitzpatrick is playing. Yeah. Jets, Giants, Cincinnati. He could win you some the, leagues. The fact that Fitzpatrick is looking his way is what matters because Gasicki's talented. He was mm -hmm. drafted to be a superstar tight end. If you don't remember, you know, Mike Gasicki uh, coming into draft season was everyone's favorite tight end because he's He was such built a, in a lab. <laughs> yes, exactly. He has uh, – he has a top five finish in week nine, top four finish last week, and he's going to do it again this week. So uh, you're talking about three top five performances in the last five weeks. That puts him into the category of somebody that you can look at with those matchups. Jets, Giants, Bengals. Yeah. Jack Doyle, six for 73-1 and one in the first week without Eric Ebron. 11 targets. That was the most important part of that and i think jack doyle is someone you can stay with as well yep, i agree uh jason witten six for 42 darren waller oh, oh yeah got that hundo yeah yeah the return of the walrus it was it was foreseen what yeah we talked about hunter renfro was the the man stealing all the wallers targets nine targets i mean they were to be, to be fair for Waller, I mean, it was a great performance. Oakland was chasing the entire match uh, against the Chiefs. It's very important that I don't speak one more word about the Raiders without hitting this button. <laughs> Stinkers of the Week, presented by Odor Eaters. Yes. Mike, you know how you felt when you kind of like apologized to Amari Cooper and then he just uh, ruined your yeah. multiple matches for yeah. multiple weeks? Yeah, yeah. I feel a little bit the same. <laughs> Going to bat for Derek Carr, who had been statistically and by the, the eye test, a very competent game manager, winning games. Yesterday they went into that matchup with the opportunity to tie the Chiefs atop the division. Instead, we've got a second consecutive stink fest for Derek Cabbage? Is that what you called him? Derek Cabbage? Sure, Derek Cabbage is... I feel like that's too big of a compliment because... I know, like... I like cabbage. Uh, cabbage isn't the best. Wait, I was going to say, what does cabbage really bring you? Crunch. Coleslaw. Crunch. So is crunch. Coleslaw, coleslaw is made with yeah. cabbage, right? Yeah. I like a good coleslaw. Yeah. But it's not... I mean, like, Mike, you would chomp on some plain old cabbage? Well, just like... No, I'm not just, like, grabbing like it out open of the a ground. fresh Eat bag. It like it. an apple. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you said it brought crunch. Yeah. Not flavor. No. Yeah. So, Derek Cabbage. <laughs> yeah, Derek Cabbage it is. I bring the he, crunch. Here's the reality with Derek Carr. He gets uh, crunched. We had we had talked about uh, you know how bad he has been in matchups in Arrowhead in the past. He just historically has not been great there. But we you know we brought it up last week, bring it up this week, every week. This is when weather really comes into play this time of the year, your fantasy playoffs, and we don't have that information early in the week. The projections are just too unreliable when you're early in a week the morning of you've got to look at those you know we put out a weather report on the fantasyfootballers.com we're tweeting things out there were so many games you had look at look at the games that were affected by wind that we were talking about on twitter before the game you had the tampa bay game which you know we were worried about Jameis, about Foles. you had darnold um and you had uh this game was unbelievably windy. I moved Pat Mahomes down a couple spots. Derek Carr was dead to me. The wind there was just unbelievable. So when you're on those streaming guys, not those, you know, Aaron Rodgers in bad weather, but when you're on those streaming guys and they've got all of a sudden an extra factor, you know, we're streaming based on good matchups. We're saying it should be easy for them. But if the weather comes in and makes it difficult – they're they're probably not good enough to overcome, you know, a, a new obstacle. Sam Darnold had been the number seven, number seven, and number three quarterback in weeks 10, 11, and 12. Heads to Cincinnati and puts up an absolute terrible performance. The Bengals defense is just too good. And now, you, are. now you're thrown into question with your confidence for Sam Darnold against Miami next week which should be an easy smash play, but now you have seen 
that uh, Cincinnati wasn't. So what are you what are you doing with Sam Darnold? I will play him. I next will week. play him as well. Um, and I'll say something like three of his last four games have been really good <laughs> <laughs> because it's it's true. Uh, I mean, it was a bad game, but uh, you know Miami is uh, you know a, a really good matchup. Like, Obviously, watch the weather if if uh, the weather is bad, then, then maybe pivot. But the the matchup's good. He can get it done, and I love the fact that he was using Robbie Anderson this week because the deep threat hopefully is going to help fantasy points come. Jameis Winston, yeah, you know, he fumbled, but he didn't throw any interceptions, which meant he didn't throw any touchdowns. See, the interceptions are uh, crucial. They're crucial. Want to keep that ratio the same? The touch, yeah, the ratio maintained. Right. Uh, so what do you do? The, the performance. You, you just keep playing. Look, if, if you watch the game, Tampa Bay dominated. Nick Foles ended up getting benched. Because the the team as a whole was playing so great, they had a defensive score. Uh, Peyton, Peyton Barber, Peyton two Barber had two rushing touchdowns. This was this was in, was very unfortunate for Jameis because Tampa Bay whooped booty, but Jameis didn't have any touchdowns, and uh, so it killed him for fantasy. All right, uh, Nick Foles. We talked about that disappointing performance. I wouldn't be surprised if Gardner got the next start. That'll be interesting. But it will it be, will. yeah, it, it's going to be, it's the Chargers. So it's at home, but it's against the Chargers. Running backs, oh, Aaron Jones is a problem right now for fantasy owners because he had been absolutely smashing, but then three out of the last four weeks, it's been disappointing. Uh, averaging about the same amount of fantasy points as Jamal Williams is, has Washington and Chicago and then Minnesota. He Only got, 11 carries. He got a touchdown in this game, and then it was called back. I remember. Yeah, my uh, my son has Aaron Jones and was very disappointed at eight years old. He wrote him a letter this morning. No, he didn't. Don't <laughs> don't do that. Don't do that. But uh, he was he was bummed out. It hasn't been good. Yeah, I I still think you start him. You know, coming up here, Washington, uh, Chicago, which is a decent matchup on the ground. I I, I mean. How are you going to bench Aaron Jones? You've got to have really great options because there aren't – while he has the ability to put up duds, he also has the rare ability to put up a 30- or 40-point week. Not a lot of people can do that. So it's touchdown distribution. Yeah. I mean, Aaron Rodgers threw four touchdowns. They He took him away from Aaron Jones. All right. Might as well continue the stink in New York. Lev Bell, 10 for 32. Oh, what? Yeah. 10 for 32. Yeah. I watched him. Woof. I remember third third down and 14, and he picked up that first down by a good two or three yards on the ground. How did he finish with 10 for 32? Magic. Wow. That I had no – I I was unaware of just Some how next bad level stuff here from Lev Bell. Lev Bell was. Holy moly. Jonathan Williams. His job may be gone. Well, he only had 14 snaps. Jordan Wilkins, 29 snaps. Naeem Hines, 30 snaps including Hines getting a goal line touchdown. Jordan Wilkins, 11 for 47, finally back in reality. Yes, he was active last Thursday, but he hadn't practiced, so there was a lot of questions around his availability. Clearly a lot healthier now. And then Jonathan Williams just didn't get a lot of work, so you might have just had your one week of, sucks. of Jonathan Williams' success. Because a, a full-time running back for the Colts, like Marlon Mack, will be fantastic. But if they go with this timeshare, they, where it's a three-way timeshare. Now we did we did hear that uh, Marlon Mack is hopeful for Week 14. Is he? Yeah, that was okay. that was the last report I saw. His first first timeline was hoping to be back by Week 14. Would you play him in his first week back? I would hope to not play him in his first week back. To be honest, if I but but he is the caliber of running back where you might not have a good enough pivot. I'm not going to pivot down to a Jamal Williams. I lean that I would go his direction with them fighting on the edge of the playoffs. I would, and it's not a leg injury. I mean, it stinks at its hand, and he's got to hold on to the ball. That's so a fair point. If he gets like a good chop in there, maybe it, it re-hurts the hand, but at least his legs are okay. Yeah, I guess if he can hold the ball, you're yeah. probably okay with Marlon Mack. Uh, Devonta Freeman... On his way back against New Orleans was 17 for 51. Next week, Carolina, that was the match we were talking about. Carolina just got smoked by Darius Geis and Peterson. I think Freeman's in your lineup. David Johnson, four for 15, two for nine. Who? Yeah. I mean, I guess we were right. <sighs> it felt weird to say it, but we said you can drop David Johnson uh, before the bye. 
And Chase the, Edmonds had no touches in this game either. The fact that you had the bye week to rest up, you know, if it, it felt dangerous when we're like, okay, you could drop David Johnson and, you know, not a must drop, but if you, if you need to move on, move on because coming off the bye, there was the, the world where, okay, he's, he's healthy now. And that was the issue. And he comes out and he's the starter first snap Drake, most snaps Drake, Drake is the starter for the Arizona Cardinals and David Johnson is a is a flat out backup. He's a handcuff now. And I'm not sure <laughs> Oh no. Yeah, I mean oh, no. he's the handcuff and if Drake goes down, I don't do know. You do you anything change rest away with the back half of the game? He got more he got more, more snaps, work. got some receiving work. Drake That's garbage was, time. Drake was not productive, thirteen for thirty one. Any hope? I I have no hope. <sighs> I have I have All right. zero hope. All right. Uh yeah, Drake stunk. Sony Michelle just ten for forty five. Game script was the anti Sony Michelle game script. How is Philip Lindsay <laughs> in the bust? I, I didn't know, say man. his name. But but no no no. He is a bust. He had fifty eight rushing yards, four receiving yards. But when that game start this has happened three weeks in a row now. When this game ha started, every single play was like, Oh my word, Philip Lindsay's good. You watched him just tearing up the field pitter patter like a you i believe you well, called was, him a video game player. yeah fantasy points per steps taken he would be number one <laughs> but he, i mean he he looked so good gets off to a, Got those fred flintstone feet he a does. strong start but for some reason every single week he can't finish the game with a good fantasy it's, line they're not a team look if they win games the rest of the way it's going to be 17 14 it's not going to be prolific with drew lock and company it's just not. I mean, Brandon Allen, Drew Locke, this is what you're dealing with. Denver's going to have to play defense, kick field goals, and unfortunately that means very limited goal line opportunities for Philip Lindsay, who did look good. That's the weird part of it. Yeah, so. he has not looked bad at all. The last few weeks, every time I see him, he looks great. Not a great fantasy option. All right, Beckham but, returned to his three for 29. He wasn't in the stinkers, which I don't know. I feel like he should have been. What's – the, what's your guys' temperature here here with uh, Patrick Mahomes, who had I, 175 yards, one touchdown, but that was coming off of 182 yards and one passing. No touchdown. worries. Yeah, he, he did in get in world. on the ground, though, so he had two touchdowns and, and, in the game. And, and I have no worries. I, I brought it up earlier, but the wind there was unfa unfathomable. There was a play where Mahomes was rolling to his right, and he threw the ball, and it was – it looked like it had to be 10 yards. It should have been a pick. It was so far from where he was trying to throw the ball to. And, you know, I, yeah, but I know why Mike's bringing it up. He He's in New England next week. Then he's Denver, divisional game, possibly bad weather. And then he's at Chicago. So the final three weeks of the season, you're leaning on, you don't know, say what you will, last two weeks, 182, 175 yards. Basically, I guess the question is, is there any situation that you're pivoting from Patrick Mahomes or are you just going to put your future in his hands? Sure. If I've got Lamar Jackson, I'm, <laughs> I'm pivoting. I'm, I'm, I'm right. staying with Mahomes. Okay. Mike, did you have any thoughts there? I mean, I, I assume I, that's why you brought that I up. I just wanted it, it just needs to be talked about that Patrick Mahomes, Yeah, I guess he did have the rush touchdown, so his, his fantasy day was saved. But that's rough, man. We've had back-to-back -back rough weeks from Patrick Mahomes. Definitely not winning you those weeks. Yeah. Beckham, three for 29 on six targets. That's the eighth time this year that he's been outside the top 36. If you haven't adjusted your expectations by now, you're out of the playoffs, so you have plenty of time to do that. It's crazy <laughs> oh, how long it has taken the fantasy community to realize that Beckham is not a weekly must-start guy. I mean, we, we have the evidence now. This is going The next two games, sure. Cincinnati, Arizona, that you, you're going to play him. You gonna play him in Baltimore? I, I, you know, I'm not. I'll it, pivot. It's so compounded though by the fact that Jarvis Landry is having a great year. Yeah, because he's the number one wide receiver. <laughs> I mean, he's he's the more oh, he's, man. he's the first read. He's targeted better. He's got a better connection with Baker. Jarvis is a guy you should be playing every week, and Odell Beckham is a guy you should be playing in the in a good matchup. It, it's just it's name lock. You know, we're Ooh, we're take just lock, take lock. We're just so enamored by what has happened in the past that we're not realizing what's happening now. Uh, you're not wrong. DJ Chart could have been uh, one of the most yeah. disappointing players of the entire week in just two for 47. Had to withstand the quarterback switch over. 
Don't worry, DJ Chark. You're maybe your your Huckleberry is coming back. Maybe, maybe yeah. he is, maybe he's not. But any concern? Any jorts. concern there for DJ Chark? Yeah. Uh, I mean, no, not 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 a concern. Like I'm pulling DJ Chark out of my lineup. It sucks that he's going to play the Chargers and we might get the Casey Hayward treatment. But I'm still playing him. All right. Uh, Mike Evans. We talked about Chris Godwin. Neither of them scored in this game. Winston didn't throw any touchdowns. Tyreek Hill, we just talked about the win, but he was 5 for uh, 55. Oh. Yeah, that sounded more exciting than his fantasy totals. Um, <laughs> just throwing that one up to yeah. the win, too. You're going to play Tyreek going forward. Yep. What do you do with Brandon Cooks now? Because he hasn't performed since he's come back. He hasn't, a, he hasn't performed all year. Look, if Arizona's yeah. not the salve for Brandon Cooks, then what is? He only had two targets. Dude, Shark Tank. 19 targets for Robert Woods. I'm out. Two targets for Brandon Cooks. You got to be done with him right now. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say I don't. I don't. You know, do you bench him? Sure. Do you cut him? Sure. Like I don't. I don't think he's a must bench. I think he's a guy that should be. A, I mean, if if he was out there on the waivers right now, and I'm looking at different options, he might not be the guy I pick up to play on a weekly basis. I might have more confidence in you know in, if Robbie Anderson's on the waivers I'm picking up Robbie Anderson over over Brandon Cooks the matchup against Seattle this coming week is fine but then after that I mean if you if you don't want to trust nope. Goff you don't want to trust his third wide receiver I think it's pretty definitive that's what he is right now what what do you do with Terry McLaurin just oh, two mercy. for eight you cry on four pray. targets I mean if you're talking about rostering somebody would you rather roster Cooks or McLaurin that's a that's a mean question. That's a really mean that question. That's mean makes spirited. Me sad. Yes, it hurts. In Don't my ask belly. it. It hurts in my <laughs> belly. I would rather roster Terry McLaurin, and I just hope that Case Keenum comes back. It's not. It's not happening though. But injury. They've won. They've won two straight games. No, that's not real. <laughs> I I disagree with real facts. Hey guys, Sammy Watkins goosed. <laughs> oh, three yes. targets, zero catches. Oh. Uh, McCall Hardman had zero targets, so this was 15 total completions by Mahomes on the entire day. Um, but the nice thing is, as you know, you shouldn't play Watkins ever. Yeah, that uh, is that is. It's nice in this day and age to have <laughs> have that kind of true confidence. I was a you know a, a Watkins truther, and if I have moved on weeks ago then everyone should have moved on well, weeks ago. Well, his powers were stolen. By the... The Lazard King. Oh, the Lazard King. The Lazard came. King came through with a big performance. You and he to took have, everything. Yeah, Mike, the false pretense. You you can't have powers stolen that you never had. Okay. Mm, uh, fair enough. Okay, real quick. I just want to give you two, two different lines. Okay. okay. All right. One is 198 yards... And three touchdowns. Oh, the is that one game? The yes, I'll that take is, it. Okay, the second is three hundred and forty yards and no touchdowns. That is nine games. <laughs> In nine games, he has. Are you talking had, about Sammy? Yes, yes, he has forty-two more yards total in the nine games combined than he had in week one. Wait, so, and, oh, so need, he was reading. No, week, no, no. Read those two numbers again, Jason. Oh, I'm worried. Uh, 100. Okay, 100. Uh, it, he, week one, 198 okay. yards, uh -huh. three touchdowns. Okay, okay. The next nine games combined, right? No touchdowns, 340 yards. Okay, so, so 100, 142. Plus, <laughs> thank you. 142 <laughs> more yards in nine total games than in one it's, week. It's still ridiculous. Hey, Jamison Crowder looked like a player you could count on two weeks ago. This week he had nine targets and he ended up with eight total yards. That's a record. <sighs> what do you do with him now? You guys are going back to the well with Darnold next week against Miami. You got to go back to the well with Crowder. I big think, game from Robbie Anderson, a hundred yards. You do go back to the well with Jamison Crowder. It's, it's Highlander situation, and for the New York Jets wide receivers, there, there can, can only be one. Yes, I. You know, look against Miami. If if the weather is good, and I, uh, you know, I. If, so Robbie Anderson or Jamison Crowder next week. Robbie. Robbie, if I have to choose one, but I think you can play both. I mean, I'm not in on Darnold. But that's a switch. I mean, last week when we asked the yeah, question, it was it Crowder, was. then Robbie, then Demarius. It's still nine targets. Right, exactly. Ugh. 
more like fart darn 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 no, I, no. I was right there with you i i i get it and i like it uh fart the, gets the, no i wouldn't be no, there no no that's that's no right. this is the the end of the show uh, it's starting to you remember the stench of the watching darnold who you started in your league of record yeah over yeah. carson wentz shut up i don't the pain is too fresh oh my goodness and and look I wasn't alone. I asked everybody that I know. Oh, you I, were full tilt. You spent the whole week talking about how good Carson Wentz is going to do, and then mm -hmm. you played Sam Darnold. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Shut mm -hmm. up. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Emmanuel Sanders, four for 41. I, I said I wouldn't play him in this game. I mean, right now you just – you can't. I don't think you could play him in, in just about any game unless you expect a huge shootout solely because the emergence of Debo, the health of Kittle, yeah. and the low passing volume, I, I don't really want to start either of those guys. Obviously, if, That's the if equation. You, if you started Debo, you were you were happy, but I don't think the process was correct to start Debo on that in, insane offensive pass interference yes, touchdown. Yes, where Debo he, looked around and couldn't believe they didn't flag him yeah, for the play. When the offensive player <laughs> is waiting There's, for oh, the shoot. obvious flag. <laughs> Hunter Henry, George Kittle, Zach Ertz, and Ryan Griffin all put up stinkers this week at tight end. Kittle, Henry, those were the most disappointing. Kittle only two for 17. Hunter Henry, two for 10. Henry had been the number one tight end since he returned from injury. I just play him again. I mean, you, yeah, you all do. those guys you just play. Yeah, yep. you do. Ertz. <clears throat> all right. He hurt me. Yeah. Well, he was right. he was dealing. Ertz was dealing with the hammy. It seemed like he wasn't even going to play all week long until Sunday morning. Everything was trending towards Zach Ertz was was going to be out. He still played on about seventy five percent of the snaps, so he and, and he, he almost had just didn't work. He almost had two different touchdowns. Right, one was a drop and one was a drop. Ah, so. um, it's the drops that get you. Yeah. All right, Stinkers of the Week presented by Odor Eaters. Odor Eaters, the best in foot odor defense. We want to thank our studio sponsor today. That's Pristine Auction, a signed Devontae Adams jersey yesterday at pristineauction.com. Went for $81.08. This is the time. This December, head over to Pristine Auction. Register with the code BALLERS. It's free to register. You'll get $5 if you end up finding a piece of sports memorabilia you love. Yeah, and it's you don't, you don't pay anything unless you win. So bid prices that you want to pay, and if... If they, you win, then you pay them, and right. then you get an autographed piece of... Sports memorabilia. It's really great. Pristine Autographed auction. piece of history. Of history, yeah. Always authentic, too. PristineAuction.com. Use the code BALLERS. Thanks for tuning in. Good luck tonight. Unless your name is Brooks. Oh! <laughs> See you tomorrow. <laughs> Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.